Ken Klippenstein drops by to talk about the real threat to American security, white supremacists. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. And, uh, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, and New York City as, quote, anarchist jurisdictions. And uh, the, the Trump administration has directed various federal agencies to figure out how they can cut federal funding to these cities because we have protests against the president going on in these cities. Bill Barr, meanwhile, has, in a conference call with U.S. attorneys last week, said that uh, protesters protesting the death of black men at the hands of white police officers uh, should be charged with sedition. I, I mean, this is how bizarre it's gotten. And now we find that the Department of Homeland Security has uh, it has just fallen through Alice's rabbit hole. This is just amazing. Uh, a brilliant piece in The Nation magazine by uh, the nation's D.C. correspondent, Ken Klippenstein. TheNation.com is the website. Ken's uh, Twitter handle is Ken Klippenstein, K-L-I-P-P-E-N-S-T-E-I-N, um, uh, over on Twitter. Uh, the, head, the title of the piece is White Supremacists Are a Threat to Elections, Say DHS. Ken, welcome to the program. Thanks for being with us. Hi, great to be with you again. So tell us about uh, what what is going on. It, it, from reading your piece, it seems like uh, either there's an internal battle at DHS or there's uh, a few people who are just like, you know, uh, throwing their hands up. I mean, it, it, give us the story. Give us the backstory and then the story. Yeah, that's an important point you make. Um, yeah, there is a conflict at DHS, which is absolutely true. We tend to think of these agencies as being monolithic. Um, but, you know, while there are political appointees uh, that the president chooses, there are also rank and file career folks that have been there for, you know, um, in many cases over a decade. And they tend to have different views, different interests than um, the political that are put in place. And so this document, this intelligence report, uh, stressing the importance of uh, focusing on white supremacists and the threats that they pose, the physical threats that they pose to election security uh, this election season. I think that this shows that conflict that's happening internally. I have a lot of sources in DHS. Um, it has long been a uh, frustration of theirs trying to get resources to go after these uh, far-right white supremacist groups, not just white supremacists, but also the anti-government militia groups um, who are killing more and more people in recent years. It didn't start now, but it certainly um, accelerated. Um, there was one case of a far right militia member who killed um, uh, multiple federal law enforcement officers in uh, California. And really, after that happened, that's when um, you start to see a whole lot more movement uh, from from these agencies um, internally, anyways. And so, what's interesting about this document that I had leaked to me from a source um, uh, in the law enforcement community um, was that it showed not just that they identified white supremacists as the chief threat to physical security as opposed to, say, cybersecurity, um, which is an entirely different matter. Um, it also went into a uh, pretty detailed discussion of these different groups and their motives, and uh, chief among their motives uh, they cited was uh, perceived grievances about immigration, which, um, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you've uh, paid much attention to the president, but that is certainly consistent with this kind of rhetoric that we've seen coming out of this administration. So it was very surprising to me to see this come out of an, come out of an agency that um, we know has had problems um, tracking the threat of white supremacists in the past. So we're seeing where scientists are quitting over at uh, the EPA, uh, where uh, people who are interested be, because because they're being forced to to uh, you know uh, allow more pollution and, and more cancers and more deaths in America. Uh, we're seeing over at the Interior Department people resigning because the the Interior Department, which manages our federal lands, is is now selling off our federal lands to mining operations and whatnot. You know, for pennies on the dollar. Uh, we're seeing, I mean, you know, federal agency after federal agency, uh, you've got people resigning in protest at the Department of Justice over what Bill Barr is doing, you know, his, his swing toward fascism. Um, now this crisis at DHS, just unambiguously, uh, I think most Americans remembering 9-11 think that Muslim terrorists represent the greatest threat to America. Where are radicalized Muslim terrorists on the hierarchy of threats compared to uh, white guys with AR-15s walking around in our cities? 
Yeah, I mean, um, there was a group called the um, Center for Strategic uh, Intelligence Studies that put out um, assessment looking back. I think it was 25 years at these uh, various extremist groups, both um, far right and far left. And what they found was that in the case of the Antifa or, you know, self-described anarchists, um, whatever you may think of them, and, you know, it is factually true that there has been, um, you know, property destruction, um, you know, broken windows, that kind of thing. Um, there, they couldn't find a single case of a person that they had killed. And when you compare that um, with the far right groups, like the white supremacists and the anti-government groups, uh, they found a far higher number. I think it was um, in the uh, hundreds or maybe low thousands. So um, to, you know, draw any sort of equivalence, between, um, you know, what law enforcement uh, says is, you know, property destruction, that kind of thing. And the kind of violence that you see uh, on the far right, it just seems silly. And, and uh, folks inside will tell you that, too. And these are not, you know, left wing progressives, the kind of folks that that comprise the intelligence and um, and um, law enforcement agencies. Uh, that's not to say that they're, you know, far right Trump people necessarily, although they're, those are obviously there. They tend to be more towards the center. Certainly, they don't tend towards the far left by any means. And they themselves are saying, sure. you know, like uh, they don't like Antifa, they don't like the um, property destruction, that kind of thing. But um, they they have a sense that we need to prioritize what's going on here and the real, you know, um, not just violence but politically motivated violence and the sort of violence that is getting uh, increasingly organized. In terms of, I know that they have intelligence that um, far right groups are starting to travel to places like Ukraine to get training um, from paramilitary, very scary paramilitary, um, especially neo Nazi groups there. And when you see that degree of organization and sort of um, coordination and collusion, that's a much different sort of thing than if a kid throws a brick through a window or something. So the two are just not the same. What specifically, yeah, and I think the last time we had violent leftists in the United States was the Weather Underground, and, and uh, you know, they've been long gone for, for 50 years. Um, what, what was, what is the specific threat that these white supremacists in the United States represent? Um, so the intelligence report mentions um, them, uh, they, they said that they had found, uh, uh, I think, internal chats in which they were discussing trying to spread COVID among minority groups. Um, you know, they have this ideology that whites are being replaced in the country uh, and that, you know, they're trying to install an illegitimate government in, from, their, from their point of view. And so their view is to try to push out the non-whites. And the way that you go about doing that, um, you know, they have a few different strategies. I know other intelligence reports, this one was quite short. It was maybe two pages long. It doesn't go into detail. But I've seen other intelligence reports um, from, for example, uh, the FBI, which I've had leaked to me in the past, um, that show that uh, they they had planned uh, actually dressing, trying to uh, dress up and look like um, far far left protesters, and then and then engaging in property destruction or even violence with the with the. Well, we saw that in Minneapolis. Getting, exactly. You know, the the yeah. first guy who was smashing windows in their car dealership that led to all the window smashing and looting turns out was a right winger. I didn't know that. I'm not familiar with that case, but this is a this is a uh, strategy that they employ to try to uh, turn public opinion against um, the protesters. And they've been very. To give you an example, I mentioned a uh, you know far right militia guy that killed um, some federal law enforcement. He was, uh, this is actually a very interesting case uh, it took place in California this summer. Um, he was a special forces guy under the Air Force. Um, he had elite training, and he actually got a machine gun that he put a a, a silencer on and drove around in a minivan when he when he uh, killed these officers. His goal in using the silencer was to, he did it near a protest so that he hoped that the police would think it was the protesters that did that. So there's a lot of thought going on. Well, and in, fact, um, and in fact, there were right-wingers at the time, and, and to this day, who are accusing left-wingers of, that, of those murders. Ken Klippenstein, uh, Stein, you're doing brilliant, brilliant reporting over at The Nation magazine. 